while we are just approaching the city of Vitebisk, I must notify you a little that our walk around the city will be eventful and at the same time will take place in a fast express format. But we will have time to see many historical and iconic places, so fasten your seatbelts and enjoy watching. For the very beginning, I think, to show you how life works in Vitebisk at the entrance to it. After all, the city center in any city is well groomed and beautiful, but few people show how the outskirts live in such walks. But if you are interested in the city center, immediately rewind the video for the fifth minute, and there we start walking. In the meantime, the first thing I want to say about mentioning any city, village or any territory of Belarus is a matter of cleanliness. The Republic of Belarus has clean roadsides, clean streets, clean squares, clean lanes, and this is not only in Minsk. This is the case both in Vitebisk and in Polotsk, another ancient city of the country. There is no chic, but it is clear that care is observed. And that is why this is so. I would ask you to write your guesses or real thoughts based on facts in the comments under this video. I myself really wonder why Belarusians love cleanliness so much and cherish it. Do not crap, so to speak, at home, in their homeland, on the streets, and throw everything into trash cans and have clean streets and roads, lawns and parks. Whether you agree with this or not, it is worth learning cleanliness from the friendly and peaceful Belarusian brothers. And we will return to the video, and I will begin my express story about Vitebisk, its streets and districts. We enter the city through the western direction, which is called the Bashenkovici Highway. This road passes through such microdistricts of the city as Lucheza, Microdistrict South 5, Microdistrict South 1, where Ivan Cherniakovsky Avenue, a Soviet military leader, army general and twice hero of the Soviet Union, who led the troops of the 3rd Belarusian Front, passes. In general, these areas, such as South 5 and South 1 the so-called South, are part of a large southern residential area, consisting of eight microdistricts in the southeastern part of the city, in Pervomoysky Administrative District. The Area S multi-story residential development project was created in the 1970s. Initially, it was planned to build seven microdistricts. In fact, they managed to build them, having completely mastered the territory. In general, before the war, there was a military airfield in these places from 1925 until the 1970s, from the beginning of the 1950s it was a civilian airport. The YUG-5 micro district was mainly built up from 1986 until the early 1990s, and nine-story prefabricated residential buildings predominate in the development, and on the site of the South 1 district, which is closer to the center, which consists of five-story houses, a hippodrome was built from the end of the 19th century. For obvious reasons, after the war he was gone. But here we are passing a symbolic place, Victory Square in Vitebisk, the largest square in Belarus. Oon covers an area of 7 hectares and appeared on the city map in 1973. Do not think that the square is all that is in front of you. She goes behind the rear of the camera, and in the video we still have time to show all its scale. And then we drive along Lenin Street to the historical center of the city. In the center of Vitebisk, a historically developed building complex has partially survived, bounded by Lenin, Yanka Kupala, Suvorov, Politechnicheskaya and Leo Tolstoy streets. Within this area, the continuity of the planning network of streets of the late 18th, first half of the 19th centuries is visible, which in turn inherited the features of the regular era. In short, Vitebisk is a city in the northeast of Belarus, the administrative center of the Vitebisk region and the Vitebisk region. It is located in the eastern part of the region on the western Divina River. The third largest city in the country, after Minsk and Gomel, in terms of population. The population as of January 1, 2020 is 364,800 people. The area is 135 square kilometers. Vitebisk is the second oldest city in Belarus after Polotsk. The city arose in 974 on the high banks of the western Divina and Vidba, which gave the city its name, on the way of the legendary trade route from the Varangians to the Greeks. According to the urban legend of the 18th century, the city was founded by Princess Olga, the wife of Rurik's son, Igor Rurikovich. The city was formed as one of the centers of the Association of the Slavs Krivici, and a convenient geographical location at the intersection of the most important trade routes contributed to its growth and prosperity over the next centuries.
regarding the origin of the hydronym of the Vitba River. For example, from the Slavic word, twist, or from the term, vit, meaning, wet place or swamp, or from the Finno-Ugric word, vit, that is, water. There are many versions here. Now we are in the historical part of the city of Vitebsk. This is a unique historical center of the city. It includes the upper and lower castles, Vizgori and Zadvinye. If Zadvinye is on the other side of the river, then we now have the Vizgori region in front of us. The hill was gradually built up in the 10th, 17th centuries. On the territory of the district at different times there were territorial formations and topographic objects. Vizgorsky Castle, Prison Uzgorsky, Vizgorskaya Sloboda, Pasad Uzgorsky, Zabitebny Pasad, Great, as well as Bigoroditsky Pasad, Pesia Polyanka, Assumption Mountain, Sharp Grave and Flat Mountain. Today, Vizgori is part of the conservation zone of the historical part of the city and is almost entirely a pedestrian zone. There are interesting places, cafes, educational institutions and residential areas. To the left along Suvorov Street and our route is the White Church of the Resurrection of Christ on the Market Square. Colloquially, the Market Church is referred to. In fact, this is a new house. Interesting. Did I surprise you? This church was built in 2009 on the model of the 18th century church that stood on this site and was destroyed in 1936. The architectural style of the building is the Vilna Baroque. This style is familiar to us as a late stage in the development of the Baroque style in the temple architecture of the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. The exact date when the first church appeared on this site is unknown. However, for the first time the wooden Orthodox Church of the Resurrection was mentioned in the sources in 1558. The Resurrection Church was often called the Market Church. She received this name because she was in the Market Square. The image of this church can be seen on the drawing of Vitebsk in 1664. However, the temple often burned, then rebuilt, burned again. How it ceased to exist is unknown. Maybe it burned down again, or maybe it was destroyed. And the first thing that catches your eye here is the town hall a beige three-story building with a tower. This town hall is one of several town halls that have survived in Belarus. The building is now occupied by the Regional Museum of Local Lore. The first town hall building was erected here in 1597, when the Magdeburg Law was granted to the city, giving the city economic activity, property rights, social and political life, thanks to which the class status of the townspeople was regulated by its own system of legal norms, which corresponded to the role of cities as centers of production. The current Baroque building of the town hall dates back to 1775. Then the town hall was a two-story building with a tower above the middle part. At the beginning of 1911, the third floor of the building was completed. But back to the White Church of the Resurrection of Christ on the Market Square. In fact, we are now entering this area. The construction of a new, stone church on the site of a wooden church was completed in 1772. It is noteworthy that the stone temple was originally uniate, and not orthodox, that is, Greek Catholic. There is a legend that the temple was so beautiful that even Napoleon Bonaparte during the occupation of Vitebsk did not dare to touch it, but ordered to place an infirmary in the temple. Again, the church became orthodox only in 1834 and in 1841 it was even rebuilt by the architect Port in order to fully comply with Orthodox canons. The Resurrection Church in Vitebsk was destroyed in January 1936 by order of the Soviet city authorities. According to the official reason, the temple interfered with the movement of public transport. However, already in 1940 this event was called an inflection, and the church was recognized as an irretrievably lost monument of architecture. We will visit the temple a little later and even go into it. While we are climbing up Suvorov Street, towards Vizgori, I must say that the history of Vitebsk covers more than a millennium. According to legend, the city was founded by the Kievan Princess Olga in 974. Two one-sided horncombs were found in Vitebsk, dating from the turn of the 9th or 10th centuries. So, for example, the first mention of Vitebsk is in the Resurrection Chronicle of 1021, 
which says that Yaroslav the Wise handed over two cities, such as Vosvich and Vidbesk, to Prince Bryachislav Izyuslavich. And by the way, while we are passing by, pay attention to the buildings of the old city. The chamber atmosphere evokes a slight immersion in ancient times. On the right in the direction of travel is the Mayakovsky Square. Its foundation took place in the second half of the 19th century on the site of the old square, which was previously called Berzhevaya. And near the square you can find the monument to the Vitebsk giant Fyodor Maknov. The monument was opened in 2018. Maknov Fedor Andreevich, who lived only 32 years, and his height was 285 centimeters, and if this is true, he was 13 centimeters taller than Robert Pershing Wadlow, the man officially recognized as the tallest in history. But let us continue the theme of the history of Vitebsk. Since the 12th century, Vitebsk has been the capital of one of the largest destinies of the Polotsk land. With the death of Vysislav Bryachislavich in 1101 and the division of his possessions into seven sons, a specific principality was formed with its capital in Vitebsk. Vitebsk went to Svitislav, who became the first prince of Vitebsk. After the land of Polotsk was devastated by Mstislav the Great, Svitislav was sent to Byzantium, and the Vitebsk throne passed to his son Vasilko. In 1132, taking advantage of the situation, he also occupied Polotsk and remained the Prince of Polotsk until 1144. Now we are passing the art school on the right. This is the building of the former House of the Public Assembly, built at the end of the 19th century. In general, Suvorov Street, along which we are walking, has a length of 1,300 meters. The street began to take shape in the 14th century. Until the 19th century, it was called Uzgorskaya, in other words, Vizgorskaya. In the 16th century, it passed through the territory of the Vizgorsky Castle. In those days, the Vadenskaya Church and the Gostini Dvor were located on the street. From the 1850s, the street was called Ofitserskaya. In the House of Kurlin there was the Chamber of the Provincial Prosecutor. In the House of Slepst there was the State Exemplary Boarding School for Noble Maidens, maintained by the noblewoman Cruz. And at the beginning of the 20th century, on the occasion of the 100th anniversary of the death of Suvorov, it was renamed Suvorovskaya Street. Then there was a synagogue, an excise office, a men's religious school on the street. At the beginning of the street was the Church of the Resurrection and the Town Hall. After the revolution, the street was called Volodarskaya in honor of Trotsky's ally. On the street there were an art technical school, a regional land department, a Schechter metal products factory, and a division headquarters. In the post-war period, two and five story houses were built on the street, to which we are now on our way. Notice again how clean the streets are. And, perhaps, this cleanliness cannot be compared with the cleanliness on the streets of Russian cities. In general, I will not hide. I am impressed by this trait of Belarusians who treat their home, namely the streets, courtyards, as if they were their apartment, where it is not customary to litter, and all papers and candy wrappers with bottles are in garbage cans. Who would not speak about the politics of the father, but in the country there is order on the streets. There is a round-the-clock sale of alcohol here, there are no strict restrictions due to COVID, but life goes on as usual and you rarely see a drunkard or a beggar anywhere. But back to the history of the city. In 1139, the exiled princes returned to the Polotsk land, and the Vitebsk Vasilkovichi began to fight for Polotsk with the Minsk Glebovichi and Drutska Ravolodovich. In this struggle, the Vitebsk princes managed to keep Polotsk longer than others. In the 12th century, four representatives of Vitebsk reigned in Polotsk. In 1167, due to feudal strife, the Vitebsk principality gradually began to lose its importance and fell under the rule of the Smolensk princes. However, this submission was short-lived, and Vitebsk regained its independence. At the end of the 12th and the first half of the 13th centuries, Vitebsk land fell into the sphere of influence of the Lithuanian princes, and in the middle of the 13th century, the Grand Duchy of Lithuania. It is not known exactly who became the successor of Prince Bryachislav Vasilkovich when he became the Prince of Polotsk in 1232. When Bryachislav died, the Lithuanian prince Tavadovil began to rule in Polotsk, and his son Konstantin began to rule in Vitebsk. Although later the former princes returned to Vitebsk again, dynastic ties with the Grand Dukes of Lithuania became permanent. The last specific prince of Vitebsk was Yaroslav Vasilkovich. 
Yaroslav Vasilkovich died in 1320 without male heirs, after which the Principality of Vytbysk, having lost its independence, was included in the Grand Duchy of Lithuania as a result of the Vytbysk War. Thus, the Vytbysk Principality was turned into a governorship. In 1508, the Vytbysk province was formed. In 1566, during the administrative reform, the voivodship was divided into two pavets, that is, counties, Vytbysk and Orsha. In 1582, the Velizh Volost was annexed to the voivodeship. And in 1623, the townspeople raised the Vytbysk uprising, protesting against the imposition of Uniatism. For the murder of the Uniate Archbishop Husafat Kuncevich, the authorities of the Commonwealth deprived the city of Magdeburg law and executed 19 people, including two Burmisters, 78 people were sentenced to death in absentia. In addition, the city was forced to pay 3,079 zloty, and the city hall was destroyed. The richest landowners of the Vytbysk voivodeship were the Sapiehas. In 1676, the Vytbysk governor Jan Krapovitsky built a Bernardine monastery in the city with the Church of St. Anthony of Padua. During the Northern War, Vytbysk, which was on the side of the Swedes, was burned by order of Peter the Great. As a result of the first partition of the Commonwealth in 1772, the Vytbysk voivodeship was ceded to the Russian Empire. Only a small part of the Orsha Pavet remained part of the Commonwealth until the Second Partition, which happened in 1793. On July 28, 1812, in occupied Vytbysk, Napoleon decided to stop the campaign. I will stop here. Here I must look around, rest the army and organize Poland. The 1812 campaign is over. The 1813 campaign will complete the rest. However, the connection of the Russian armies in Smolensk on August 3 forced Napoleon to change his plans and resume the campaign against Moscow. On January 1, 1919, according to the decision of the First Congress of the Communist Party of Belarus, Vytbysk became part of the BSSR, but on January 16, by decision of the central bodies of the Bolshevik Communist Party, the city was transferred to the RSFSR. In 1924, Mogilev was returned to the BSSR, where it became the center of the district and district. In the meantime, we are approaching the Square of Heroes of the War of 1812, which is located on the high bank of the Western Divina. This is the central square of Vytbysk in front of the Governor's Palace, which is located on the left side. Now it is the former Governor's Palace. The house was built in 1772, rebuilt in 1811. Napoleon stopped here in 1812 when he went to beat Moscow. Actually, that is why the Park of Heroes of 1812 was laid out here. The steel in honor of the victory in the war was opened in 1912. And yes, by the way, now the KGB directorate for the Vytbysk region is located in the building of the former Governor's Palace. And if you dig history again, it turns out that in the same palace Grand Duke Konstantin Pavlovich, the failed emperor and brother of Alexander I, died of cholera, for whom the Decembrists went to Senate Square in the Russian Empire in St. Petersburg. But then Konstantin Pavlovich was the governor in Poland for 15 years and, on the whole, everything suited him there. But only in 1830 he was overthrown by the Polish uprising, which was directed against the power of the Russian Empire in the territory of the Kingdom of Poland. And the Grand Duke never made it to Petersburg. Next to the park is the cemetery of heroes who died in the Great Patriotic War. Among others, the legendary old man Manai, the commander of the partisan movement in the Vytbysk region, is buried here. западная двина где-то там in general the western divina is a river in the north of eastern europe flowing through the territory of russia belarus and latvia for example such cities as polotsk and riga stand on this river river connected by the inactive berezina water system with the dnieper river 
The length of the river is 1,020 kilometers, of which 325 kilometers are in Russia, 328 kilometers are in Belarus and 367 kilometers are in Latvia. I propose to further bypass the former Governor S. Palace and walk along the river towards the restored Assumption Cathedral. The cathedral stands on Assumption Hill. This is a historical place in the city center, a natural hill on the left bank of the Western Divina on the territory of the Vizgorsky Castle. From the south it was limited by the Vidba River. From the north, in the area of U200B, U200BTHE Modern Yanka Kupala Street, by the Sharp Grave Hill. These two hills were separated by a ravine that was filled in. According to archaeologists, until the 12th century there was a tribal sanctuary on Bald Mountain, as it was first called. This version is supported by the name of Mount Lycea, which is characteristic of pagan temples, as well as finds found in the area of the hill, a ritual bone axe with magical signs, and a stragglus of the 12th-13th centuries. In the 15th century, the hill was part of Zabatebni Pasad. Around the same time, the Orthodox Church of the Most Holy Theotokos appeared on Bald Mountain. Later, the church is also called the name of the Most Pure Mother of God, Prekostinskaya, and the hill gets the name Prekostinskaya Mountain. In the 17th century, the Prekostinskaya Mountain became part of the Uzgorsky Ostrog, Vizgorsky Castle. In the 1620s, the house at the Church of the Prekostinskaya was occupied by the Uniate Polotsk Archbishop Husafat Kuntsevich. The church itself becomes Uniate. During the uprising of the townspeople in 1623, the Orthodox residents of Vitebsk kill Kuntsevich, who fanatically propagated Uniatism, on Prekostinskaya mountain and dump his body from this mountain into the Divina. In 1743, the construction of a stone church and a monastery building began here. But now we have reached the restored cathedral on Uspinska Gorka. The Assumption Cathedral in Vitebsk is a monument of Vilna Baroque architecture on the Assumption Hill. During the construction, the Temple of San Carlo al Corso in Rome was taken as a model. This cathedral was built for almost 30 years and was completed in 1777 as a Uniate temple. In 1799, the church was given to the Orthodox and renamed the Assumption Cathedral. After a while, the building will be blown up and destroyed to the ground during the period of Soviet power in 1936 during the Godless Five-Year Plan. But now the White Stone Church has been completely recreated at the beginning of the 21st century at the initiative of the Orthodox Church. The rite of the Great Consecration of the Cathedral on September 30, 2011 was headed by the Patriarchal Exarch of all Belarus, Metropolitan of Minsk and Slutska Filare. Well, I invite you to come with me to this temple. See how new houses look from the inside to an old architectural model, whose age does not exceed 20 years. But let us add a little more history to the conversation and our tour. In 1812, the French set up an infirmary in the cathedral that stood on this site, destroying its best decorations along the way. After the expulsion of the Napoleonic troops, the cathedral was restored. In 1831, Grand Duke Konstantin Pavlovich, who died in Vitebsk from cholera, was buried in the cathedral. In 1844 the church was refinished with a new wooden iconostasis. After 30 years, the cathedral again came, both outside and inside into disrepair. In 1872, Governor Rostitsev established a special building committee to repair the cathedral. Academician Roman Fyodorovich Vinogradov was involved in the painting of the cathedral, the carving, painting and gilding of the iconostasis was entrusted to the restorer of the Imperial Academy of Arts Sokolov. However, the Technical and Construction Committee did not agree with the project of changing the external appearance of the building, since the main condition for the overhaul was to preserve the general character of the style. It was forbidden to change the triangular pediments with bow ones, as the most appropriate for the character of the other parts of the façade, as well as the upper parts of the front towers into hemispheres. The dome, which does not correspond to the character of an Orthodox Church, was recommended by the Committee for Opportunities to Fix. At the same time, the upper part of the existing lantern of the large dome was asked to be replaced with a more elegant finish. As a result of several reconstructions of the 19th century, the original temple of Baroque architecture acquired the features of classicism. After the establishment of Soviet power in the city, the cathedral and the seminary were closed. On March 22, 1920, 
The church building was included in the list of buildings in the city of Vitebis to be protected. By the decision of the Council of People's Commissars of the BSSR in 1926, the temple was included in the list of monuments of antiquity, art, life and nature, declared state property. Then the cathedral was included in the list of 94 Belarusian monuments of art, antiquity, life and nature. But in September 1936, the cathedral was blown up by a team of Sapper Grigorenko, a future major general, dissident and human rights activist. Later, he repented that he took part in the destruction of three temples. About the explosion of the Assumption Cathedral, he wrote, Exactly a month and a half took the preparation of the explosion. But the explosion exceeded all expectations. There was no explosion in the usual sense. Only the rumble and rattle of bricks falling from above. The house, which was taken care of by the authorities, not only was not damaged, not a single glass flew out, did not crack, even in the windows overlooking the cathedral. The temple simply sank, uttering a long groan, and turned into a pile of bricks. In 1949, on the site of the cathedral, a workshop for a grinding machine factory was built, which was abandoned in the 80s and demolished in 1998. Well, then, as I said, at the beginning of the 21st century, it was decided to restore the temple on the site of a wasteland. Today the size of the temple, 55 by 33 meters, of the total height is 51 meters. We walked away from the temple along Kamisera Krylov Street towards Mayakovsky Square. The theme thereby looped the route to Vizgori. Although a building that was either killed by a fire or by some other state of emergency flashes by here now, in general, I must say that in the 1980s, these streets looked much more deplorable than they are now. The facades have been restored and kept clean. And, for example, enthusiastic artists made a unique prefabricated bench with three kinds of paintings. It assembles like a puzzle. Very exciting. In general, it is clear that history is valued in the city and the city continues to live. Everywhere there is a small business, cafes, restaurants, establishments, in the summer it is good and intimate. Considering that Vitebisk, a city that was very seriously damaged in the war, was colossally destroyed, that sometimes it's hard to believe that on some modern parks there was a large residential historical building as a dense wall, it continues to live. However, the city heals the wounds of the past. So the time has come for us to visit the Holy Resurrection Church. This is an Orthodox church in the city center, located on Voskresenskaya Square, at 2 Suvorov Street. I told about his full story at the very beginning of the video at the fifth minute. With the collapse of the USSR, people began to talk about the restoration of the temple in its original place. Both Orthodox and Uniates claimed the place. As a result, it was decided to build an Orthodox church. In 2001, construction work began to restore the church. The construction of the temple was partly funded by donations from the city's enterprises and ordinary citizens. Anyone could buy a brick to build a church, on which his name was written. Bricks for construction were supplied by the Vitebisk Association, Keramika. In 2002, when the basement was completed, it housed the lower church of St. Anthony the Roman, wonderworker of Novgorod. In 2005, the walls of the future temple were built, and in 2006, Baroque domes, produced by a Russian enterprise, were installed. At the end of 2008, exterior finishing works were completed, images of Christ, the Mother of God and Saints were created in the niches of the walls. In May 2009, the church received a voice, bells. On July 10, 2009, the Holy Resurrection Church was solemnly consecrated. For lighting in the evening, decorative lighting is arranged. The total height of the temple is 37 meters. Uh -huh. Thank you. The city is relatively small, 
very close in number and comparable with Vologda, Vladimir, Chita, Arkhangelsk, Nizhny Tagil, Simferopol or Kaluga, Smolensk. If you have been to these cities, write, in your opinion, how well groomed and beautiful is Vitebsk as a city. It is good that the memory here revives the amazing buildings of the past. And it is sad that not everything can be restored. After all, I believe that memory should be preserved in our modern thoughts. It is important to answer the question, where are we from, where are we going? In particular, it is very important not to forget the Second World War and move the development of the city further forward. Well, then, we walked along Lenin Street Oktyabrsky Bridge and left the Vitba River under us. We passed the art museum and came to the intersection of Mikhail Frunz Avenue and Lenin Street. By the way, ILL say right away that if you go diagonally through this intersection, you will get to the concrete parade ground, near which there is a well-known pavilion, or rather the dome of the amphitheater, where the stage and visual places of the Slavic Bazaar are located. Витебский базар проходит вот здесь на летней стене. If earlier Vitebsk was known as the city of Mark Chagall, now it is also known as the venue for the Slavyansky Bazaar. In 2021, the festival celebrates its 30th anniversary. For some reason, it seems to me that my viewer has been to this event at least once in his life, and if not, then he certainly watched either a live broadcast, or read a lot or knows about this festival. By the way, write about it in the comments. For the song festival, a worthy concert venue was needed. And she managed to do it. But we will have time to get to it a little later. Let me remind you that the festival was conceived as a common cultural event of three countries, Belarus, Russia and Ukraine. A distinctive feature of the festival is the international competition of pop song performers and the international children's music competition. Vitebsky Bazaar проходит вот здесь на летней стороне. Since I remembered Mark Chagall, it is worth going through the Marco City Shopping and Entertainment Complex to the current building of the Vitebsk City Center for additional education for children and youth. Initially, from the end of the 19th century, the first city four-class school was located there. Mark Chagall studied there from 1900 to 1905. Moreover, the first two years in the same class with Osip Zadkin, the famous French sculptor. There is a memorial plaque about this on the facade of the house. We will proceed to this place and then we will go to Victory Square and the Three Bayonets Monument. Индусов много. Программа по образованию. Вон логотип Славянский базар. На торце дома. Гостиницы. Марк Захарович Шагал is a Russian and French artist of Jewish origin. In addition to graphics and painting, he was also engaged in sonography, wrote poetry in Yiddish. One of the most famous representatives of the artistic avant-garde of the 20th century. He received a traditional Jewish education at home, having studied the Hebrew language, the Torah and the Talmud. From 1898 to 1905, Chagall studied at the first Vitebsk four-year school, near the building of which we are standing. In 1906, Mark studied fine art at the art school of the Vitebsk painter Udall Pan, and only then moved to St. Petersburg. Mark Chagall lived a rich life as a wanderer, and eventually died in France at the age of 97. Marc Chagall left behind a considerable number of works. 
The main guiding element in the work of Marc Chagall is his national Jewish self-awareness. If I were not a Jew, I would not be an artist, or I would be a completely different artist, says Marc. And we continue to move towards the west of the city along Lenin Street. In general, it must be said that during the war, many buildings on the street were damaged. But it was decided to demolish the preserved historical buildings of the street, for the sake of modern, standard houses. Some quarters, for example, together with the Church of St. Anthony, were demolished during the expansion of the street in the late 1950s and early 1970s. I must say that at the sixth minute of this video we were passing a small square with a fountain, confluence of three rivers, where a demolished tall church was previously located. Other buildings were also demolished, such as the Brosy Hotel building. All this was destroyed in that time without explanation. A little later, the street was built up with typical four- and five-story residential buildings. So the surviving temples and churches, such as the Holy Intercession Cathedral, for example, are a rarity. After the war, it stood in real ruins, there was no brick on brick. It really could have been demolished, and it stood untouched for a long time. And in 1986 it was decided to restore the building. But suddenly, a monument to the Belarusian Soviet writer Evdokia Yakovlevna Loss appeared before our eyes. Known as a lyric poet, author of children's prose and poetry. I would like to emphasize once again that there are very beautiful busts and monuments in Belarus. They are made in different proportions than in Russia. Even if it is an ordinary memorial plaque, it will be made large and voluminous, quite beautiful with a portrait of a person. We will quickly run into a second-hand store along Lenin Street to look at the assortment of clothes in Belarus and then we will move on. I will just remind you that you can support the project with a money transfer using the QR code that I show on the screen. This is a simple IBAN transfer of funds for channel development. I plan to continue to create such excursions here and in walks, because it takes a long time to create content, but I hope it turns out good. As a last resort, just like this video and send it to any of your friends, subscribe if you haven't already done so. Additional links in the description below the video. Victory Square in Vitebisk is the largest in Belarus. It occupies an area of 7 hectares and appeared on the city map in 1973. Includes a memorial zone and a zone for public events. In the memorial zone there is a memorial complex in honor of the Soviet soldiers liberators, partisans and underground fighters of the Vitebisk region. Here, on Victory Day, wreaths are traditionally laid at the eternal flame. In the area for public events, four fountains, two large LED screens, and a stage are installed. In winter, a skating rink is poured here, and on New Year's Eve the main city Christmas tree is set. The place is currently undergoing some renovations. The square got its name in 1973. Prior to that, it was called Orsha Square, Chenyahovsky Square. Urban development in the area of Victory Square began to take shape in the 19th century. At the beginning of the 20th century, the following streets passed through the territory of the modern square. Korovavskaya, Orshanskaya, Bazarnaya. Nearby, a little to the northwest was the Mogolev Market. Since 1925, the area of modern Jeskova Street has been built up. In 1948, the Zarya Cinema was opened. Until the mid-1960s, this area was a typical urban outskirts. There was a city bath. A cemetery adjoined from the east, between the modern post office and the fire station, and there was a swamp in the place of the square. Victory Square was formed by the development of residential buildings in the 1950-70s. In 1974, a memorial complex was created in honor of the Soviet soldiers' liberators, partisans and underground fighters, which became the center of the composition of the square, and a square was planted. The memorial complex in honor of the Soviet soldiers' liberators, partisans and underground fighters of the Vitebisk region is the main memorial building of the city. The memorial complex includes the memorial area, two pools, ten pylons, sculptural compositions and the main monument. The rectangular square of the memorial is located below the level of Victory Square, 14 steps lead to it. On the sides of the square there are five pylons with the dates of each year of the Great Patriotic War. Two pools, 85 meters long and 10 meters wide, with four seething jets in each, lead to the main monument. Along the central axis of the memorial, on the banks of the Western Divina, rises the main monument three trapezoidal 56-meter obelisk pylons, narrowed at the top. At a height of 5 meters, the pylons are united by a trihedral monolithic frieze, on the edges of which reliefs are cast, warriors, partisans, underground. From the inside, 
The pylons of the obelisk are connected by a ring with the inscription, Glory to the Heroes. Beneath it, on a star-shaped podium, the eternal flame is lit. Three stairs lead to the river from the monument. In front of the memorial square, on the sides, there are two sculptural compositions depicting Soviet soldiers and civilians. The place is strong and charged with the theme of the Great Patriotic War, a large part of the Second World War, an echo of the past of the city, which was badly damaged in those days. And the time is getting late. And it starts to get dark. The sun has already set. And dusk begins. The only thing that I want to have time to show you today is the Soviet buildings on Kirov Street, made in the Stalinist Empire style, but I will be able to partially show the railway station and the dome of the amphitheater of the Slavic Bazaar. That is where we are heading right now. Slavyansky Bazaar in Vitebsk positions itself as a long-term, large-scale, interstate cultural action of the Union of Russia, Belarus and Ukraine, which is focused on uniting multinational creative forces, all the most valuable things that each of the national cultures is famous for. As I said earlier, the bazaar is celebrating its anniversary this year 2021 the event is already 30 years old. And on the site of a later built amphitheater, at the beginning of the 20th century there was a circus Larry. The predecessor of the Slavyansky Bazaar was the Polish Song Festival in Vitebsk. The Belarusian party leadership decided to choose Vitebsk for this event, since at that time it was twinned with the Polish city of Zelona Gora, where the Soviet Song Festival had been held since 1965. Thanks to the efforts of the composer Igor Luchenik and the then first secretary of the regional party committee Vladimir Grigoriev, it was decided to build a summer amphitheater in Vitebsk, since at that time there was no venue for a large-scale festival in the city. Construction of the amphitheater began in 1987, designed by architect Vyacheslav Babashkin, the construction site was chosen very carefully. We decided that the best place would be a natural depression in a stream ravine, the slopes of which would protect the site from city noise. They built at a rapid pace. Six months later the concert hall, which could accommodate 5,400 spectators, was ready. In the summer of 1988, the first concert was held here. The first Polish song festival in Vitebsk was held in July 1988 at the highest level. Many Polish guests came to Vitebsk, and the then leaders of Poland and the USSR Wojciech sent their congratulations to the participants Jaruzelski and Mikhail Gorbachev. The organization of the first festival is associated with the name of the director of the Polish Song Festival in Vitebsk, and the general director Rodion Bass. It was Bass who proposed the creation of the Slavyansky Bazaar, instead of the abolished festival of Polish songs. According to him, when the festival of Soviet song in Poland ordered to live for a long time, the question arose of what to hold with us, on a beautiful site. We went to Moscow to visit our companions. There were many ideas and conversations. All this took place in the Rossiya Hotel, which no longer exists, and the closest restaurant to it was the Slaviansky Bazaar. The idea was born. The festival was supposed to gather representatives from the Slavic countries and those countries where the Slavic culture was somehow present. The first, Slaviansky Bazaar was solemnly opened in the Vitebsk Summer Amphitheater in 1992. There were artists from Belarus, Russia, Ukraine, USA, Canada, Australia, Poland and Georgia, over a thousand participants and guests. A lot of time has passed since then. And the political picture of the world, of course, has changed a lot. In 1998, thanks to good financial support from the union budget, the festival turned into a major international event. Since the mid-2000s, the Slavyansky Bazaar has become the main cultural event for Belarus, on which funds are spent from the state budget and the budget of the Union State. Due to the huge influx of representatives of mass pop culture, the festival begins to lose the concept on which the main idea was built, through art, to peace and mutual understanding. The winners of the festival are often guests from Kazakhstan, Ukraine, and once representatives of the now-defunct state of Yugoslavia also performed here. The current capacity of the summer amphitheater is 6,247 seats. The last renovation was in 2006. As a matter of fact, this is where our quick express tour through the streets of Vitebsk ends. We are now at the Central Railway Station Vitebsk. 
From here there are double-decker trains to Minsk and there are trains from Russia. The train station is good. It is a pity that during the Great Patriotic War the old station building was completely destroyed. The modern terminal was built in 1952. Friends, I hope you enjoyed the walk and are satisfied with such a quick excursion. Please rate this video. Send it to a friend. And do not forget to subscribe to the channel. Watch a lot of other interesting videos on my channel. And we'll see you in the next episodes. Bon voyage.